Oh my. <laughs> that wouldn't be wise. <sighs> Sun's going to be up in just a few minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, listen, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to communicate because I don't have a category for what I've just experienced. Um, and so for a few moments there, I feared that this was just going to come to a conclusion. I wasn't going to be able to say anything. And then when I realized I was going to be allowed to say something, then I feared, well, I don't know what to say. Uh, and so that's where we find ourselves standing here before you. Uh, uh, possibly the wealthiest man um, relationally in the world, and yet the most undeserving man, sinner uh, in the world, and amazed by grace. How, I think tonight really testifies more to your kindness and generosity uh, than personally it does to any character or service you discern. But I want to thank you for identifying evidences of grace. Uh, my mom is here. She's not buying any of it. Uh, I know she's been perplexed all evening as she has listened to you honor me. Now, my mom has a deep love for her son and all her children. She is 80 years old, and I am so glad uh, that she could be here tonight. So thank you, Mom, for being here. So um, here's what I've thought throughout the evening. I don't have words, but I have plenty of tears, and I pray that the tears will exceed in effectiveness any words I could possibly craft with my woefully limited and inadequate vocabulary at a moment like this in my life. I have simply cried throughout the entire evening tears of joy that I, at one point, an object of wrath, would now be an object of God's mercy. That I, who at one point was running as fast as I could to hell, was stopped by the Savior and saved and then placed here with you to run this race together, bringing me to this very moment this evening. I am simply uh, overwhelmed and without words. I can assure you that a few hours from now, I will not be asleep. I am certain you will be asleep. I, I will not be asleep. I will be laying in bed staring at the ceiling, trying to compose, trying to carefully compose words to the Savior and carefully compose words that I can communicate to you, uh, expressing my gratefulness. Um, so thank you for taking the time to come. Thank you for the statement you make by your presence here. Um, and before we uh, conclude, I, I, do, I do want a, a particular thanks. Uh, two weeks ago when I had the privilege to give the farewell sermon here, I said to the church that I've served them in weakness and sinfulness, drawing from 1 Corinthians 2 where Paul talks about serving the Corinthians in weakness. I said, I've served you in weakness, I've served you in sinfulness, and I've served you in dependence upon others. And I don't want history rewritten. Um, I want if Paul wanted the Corinthians to recall his weakness, well, I want Covenant Life Church to recall mine uh, so that everyone might be freshly amazed by the grace of God. Well, there was a category, dependence on others, and I communicated that I've never had an original thought and that anything, 
anything from my teaching where they have benefited is because I'm always standing on somebody else's shoulders. So if I have provided you with a view that you previously didn't have, it's because I'm standing on somebody else's shoulders. But I wasn't able to elaborate and I'm saving actually that elaboration for uh, this coming Sunday, but I just briefly want to do it. I want you to hold your applause, briefly want to do it right now. I want to ask Nora Earls to please stand. This night would not be complete without thanking her. I want you to know that Carol and I have been dependent on Nora. Um, and I wrote in Christ Our Mediator, she's just simply the best secretary in the world. And I've said to Nora a number of times, when you retire, I'll get the lights um, because so much of what I do, so much of what we do is because of the way she serves. So I'd like her to stand. I would like the pastoral team of Covenant Life Church to stand uh, because I, 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 th I think in my life I, I am ascribed uh, exaggerated significance uh, and I have been the beneficiary of this pastoral team and the way they serve along with their wives. So this night for me wouldn't be complete without having them stand so that we can thank God for them. And in their midst is Joshua. And I want to just thank God for Joshua. I'm making the loudest statement I can of my trust in, respect for, my love for Joshua by delegating uh, this position and this church that I love the most to this man. Um, three sons-in-law sit here. I couldn't make a louder statement to them of my trust in them, respect for them, than to delegate each of my daughters to them respectively. Well, I can't make a louder statement to Joshua of my trust, my love, my respect, than to delegate Covenant Life Church on Sunday. And what a joy that is going to be. And what a gift he is to me. Uh, what, a, what, a joy, what a peculiar joy I have to delegate the church I love the most to somebody who is more gifted than I am. How kind. How kind of God. And I pray I can live many years to watch the fruitfulness of this church under Joshua's leadership. And I pray I live many years so that I can support him and do whatever I can to make him a success. What a joy. Listen, folks, if I were 30 and Josh was 29, um, I think I'd be making this transition because I believe he's more gifted. And I believe God has provided him to lead this church into the future. So how rich am I? And then finally, I do want my wife and daughters and son to stand because we have served you together. And two weeks ago at the end of the farewell sermon, I was with the family in the front row and I said to them, thank you for the gift of godliness that you have given this church. Um, this church has not known inconsistency between my preaching and, my, and our practice. <sighs> That's been a gift to this church. And I related to them what a joy it was for me to preach this farewell sermon, having all of them on the front row, knowing that I don't have regret and that they did not cause me heartache, quite the opposite. There is no more happier husband or joyful father because of my wife and children and the privilege I have to serve them. And we have served covenant life as a family. I was reading recently where it was said of Edwards that, that his, his, his family was on full display for all to view. And so has the Mahaney family been on full display. And I want to thank God for my extraordinary wife and children. It has been our privilege to serve Covenant Life as a family. When the girls were young, they will tell you very little. I said, girls, as a, as a senior pastor, it's not a job for daddy. It's a calling, but it's a calling that we have as a family, not just daddy. We serve this church together. And I can't and I won't serve this church apart from us as a family serving this church. And they have served this church. And what a wonderful gift it has been to me to serve this church with them. So if all those people could just stand, because it would just be appropriate for you. We're not exalting them, but we are honoring them. And it would be inappropriate for this evening to end without, without me being able to say thanks to them and without you being able to thank God for them. So if they would all please stand right now and through your applause, would you just communicate your gratefulness to God? for these folks and the difference they have made in the context of Covenant Life Church. Amen.